What's going on guys? Max here, madhousemoney.com, and this is going to be a special, special, special treat for you guys. This video is going to contain my most epic single trade of all time, my biggest win of all time, my first ever multi-million dollar trade, and my best single day win of all time, guys. You're not going to want to miss this. The GME epic washout long after the Mad As Money intro. What's going on guys? Max here, madassmoney.com again. And before we get into the live trading footage of the legendary GME washout long video, we're going to go ahead and talk about the milestone that I hit today, achieving, officially achieving eight figure trader status for the first time in my career, hitting $10 million today. And check out the date guys. It's only March 11th. So I did set that goal to hit eight figures. For the entire year though never would have imagined in a million years i would hit it in just the third month out of the year now at this point the sky is the limit a lot of pressure is gone now for sure as if i didn't really have much pressure to begin with i mean they're really uh it's been just an epic year guys it's been just an epic year and now i just feel like everything is is just coming together and it just feels freaking amazing truly blessed to do this at this point uh, I think I'm, I'm on pace to make over $50 million. The last video, I was on pace to make $40 million now after the last couple of epic days. Now that number has moved up to over $50 million. So at this point, I really don't know what's going to happen. Even if I make zero for the rest of the year, it's still going to be a career year by a long shot. And on top of that, guys, how fitting it is. Today is my 10th year anniversary of my uh, trading career. I started with $6,000. I was a young and budding a uh, recent college graduate started with six thousand dollars in my e-trade account never would have thought it would have ballooned to what it is to this day so again truly blessed uh you know i, I would have just been happy with uh turning that six thousand dollars into you know maybe like tens of thousands or hundreds a uh, couple uh, maybe like a hundred thousand or something never would have thought i'd be doing this for a living and uh again just looking back on it 10 years of skin in the game Here's to 10 more years, and here's to more tens and tens of millions of dollars, hopefully. And uh, thank you for all you guys that have been along beside me sharing this journey. I opened this YouTube account in 2013. I opened my Twitter account in 2012. So those were my first uh, attempts at social media to document this trading journey. So thank you to each and every one of you guys that have been along since almost the very beginning, basically. Uh, hopefully uh, we can just keep this uh, keep this ball rolling guys keep this ball rolling so without further ado of course we're going to talk about the epic live trading example of course this is what you guys are here to see this is the trade i took yesterday of course march the 10th 2021 the gme epic dump the crazy crash gme of course already a stock for the ages ran to 500 bucks tanked all the way back down to like 30 40 bucks and now it's on its second run Hitting a high of three hundred and forty-eight dollars and five uh, at three hundred forty-eight dollars and fifty cents. Never would have guessed it would have done that, guys. This is why GME has been such a shocking ticker overall. What an amazing play! I'm not going to complain. It's just made me so much money at this point. I think GME now, after today, today I made another two hundred and seventy thousand uh, dollars or so. So you add today's gains as well. I think at this point I, I've made like over four point five million dollars or something like that or maybe even more on just solely gme since gme was first introduced as a play earlier this year so i can't complain as long as gme keeps paying the bills i mean i, I that's just that's just freaking awesome so gme we're gonna pick it up here it's 12 17 lunch hour gme just hit a high of 348.5 I'm currently up $127,000 on a day. I took a short in the morning uh, around this area, stopped out on this candle. It was a correct move because if I didn't stop out, I probably would have been down like a million bucks. I took a $563,000 loss, as you can see right there. And I flipped my bias to long. As you guys know, I'm a big proponent of bias flipping. I don't stay 
overly biased to one side. Like for example, if the stock is clearly bullish, I'm going to stop out of my short and go long. Vice versa, same thing. If the stock's clearly bearish, I'm going to stop out of my long and start to go short. And this is what I did here. So I was down about half a million dollars. I flipped long. And during this low uptrend, I started long these washes and I made $647,000 going long. So now I'm net positive $127,000 as a result. But we're going to pick it up right here. Stocks just made a new high of day. And uh, we're going to see what happens here, guys. Let's go. So let's keep an eye on it. As always, if you guys are new to my channel, I keep, I keep an eye on this thing right here. This is called the level two or the montage. This is the time in sales right here. This is what I'm looking at 90% of the time. Okay, guys. Now, I am going to run into a lot of problems on the level two. Uh, the quotes were really messed up for whatever reason. There were a lot of cross quotes. Cross quoting is when the bid is higher than the offer or the, uh, or the offer is lower than the bid. So the quotes are completely spazzed out and they're completely useless at one point. I'll point it out to you guys. It made the trade extremely difficult. So we're looking for a wash all along here off of this high of day. Uh, I did mention to my guys in chat, the higher the stock got, the riskier it gets. So you got to size down because if you get, get in on these little small washes and it ends up being a bigger dump than you expect and you're overcommitted with size, what happens? Your risk management goes out the window and you're going to take a big loss. So this is why I kept telling my guys, size down on these dips, okay? So I took a starter here. Now you notice I'm only in 5,000 shares this time. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm going in a lot smaller, right? Scaling with 5,000 share increments. Usually I would do 10,000 shares, but then I just don't have as much conviction when the stock goes higher and higher and higher. The chances of dump is a lot higher, especially when you don't have uh, a large, uh, you know, air pocket to work with. You know, there you go. See, it flashes down to three oh, uh, like three hundred dollars. You see right there. So if you overcommitted size in these small dips, right, the way you dip by is if you get a big dip, then you can size in more because if you get a bigger dip, you're likely to get a bigger bounce. But if you get a smaller dip, you're basically going for a smaller bounce, but there's risk of a bigger dip than you think is high. So that's why you got to size in smaller when you get these smaller dips, right? 340 down to 330, you know, not really the best dip on a $340 stock, right? But right here from 348 to 300, now that's a pretty good dip. You're talking about more than like a third, like a 13% move, give or take, right? So that's a good dip. That's why now I'm in 15,000 shares here. Now you'll see what happens though. This thing just ends up crashing because it's, it's about to halt. And I noticed that and I try to stop out immediately. So right there. I tried to stop out. Unfortunately, couldn't get out fast enough, so I only got filled uh, a couple shares there. So I got out a couple there on that stop out. Cause now I know at this point it's like, shoot, this is gonna dump a lot further than I expected. This might be the dump, the crash. And I basically told the guys inside the Madas Money Trading Community, you guys gotta watch out. This might be the big dump. This might be the big play. Let's make the million dollars. All right. So right now I gotta get out of this jam. Stock's currently halted. Let's see what happens. Okay. So the stock's about to resume here. You'll see in a second. So again, I'm still stuck. 11,000 shares at a 324 average. Not good, right? Not good. But let's see how I get out of this, okay? Stock opens up. Look at that. Straight down to another downside halt level. You see how quickly things can get sour on a stock like this? This is why this is very dangerous, and this is why you cannot overcommit size on these mini dips. This is how you protect yourselves, guys. People keep asking me in my videos, risk management, where is your risk management? What are you doing with your risk management? This is essentially how I manage risk, guys. When there's still a chance that the stock might dump further, I'm not in big size. Because if you're in big size, again, on these little mini dips, there's always that chance that it might go further than you think, like dump a lot further than you think, like what you're seeing right now. This thing just basically went from 348 down to 260. It's a pretty big move. Right, if you're big in big size right here, bye bye account. See you next time. Better luck next time. Right, so let's see what happens here. Um, so there looks like it was a fake halt right there. You see that? So there was a fake halt. It looks like it's hit that halt level, didn't completely halt, stalled out. So I went for the ad there. Okay, now I average down 290. So let's see when you get that bounce there. Now it is bouncing a little bit, right? It's bouncing a little bit. This is basically bouncing off low of day. This is what's this is what's going on. It's bouncing off low of day. It's getting a little bit of a wick there. A bounce off low a day. Let's see how far it's going to go. Okay. 280s. You got 280s here. But look, it's stalling out already a little bit there. 280s. Kind of sketch, right? Kind of sketch. It's back down to lows. Uh-oh. New lows. So that's why I stopped out again. Got to take another loss. So you see, this is essentially what I call recycling shares, guys. This is what I talk about every single time 
in my chat room. So what is recycling shares? Recycling shares is basically, I'm just trying to take a stab at each support level. If it bounces, great. I hold on to the position. If it doesn't, I try to stop out of at least half. That allows me to realize a little bit of a loss. At the same time, I'm not stuck with full size at a bad average. And now I have room or bullets to re-add more uh, to my position as it goes lower until I get the real bounce. That should position myself with a better average. And then when the real bounce happens, then I'm going to be making the real money, okay? But it's important that you realize the loss because if you don't realize the loss, sure, yeah, your realized loss column won't be as big, but your unrealized loss column will be really huge and you got a bad average. So this is why recycling shares is very important, okay, guys? So now it's going to halt to 248. I'm trying to stop out as much as I can. Unfortunately, I couldn't do it. It halts before my order gets filled. So now I'm stuck, 9,372 shares, 290 average. Let's see what happens here on this halt resume at 248. Okay. Now we got a lot of room for this thing to free fall, right? 200 there, possibility. You know, it might drop really hard. There it goes, 230s, 220s. Now, this is where I made a pretty big mistake. So, on this halt resume, I went in with Sizer at 240. I have to say that was a big mistake. I'm not, a, I'm, I'm not perfect. I'm human. This is actually the most costly move that I made here. If I didn't do this move, I'd probably be up easily like two three million dollars on a day so i went for that long there with size thinking that might be the bottom because i was thinking maybe we're gonna probably bottom out here between 220 and 240 that was completely wrong so this is what happens i get stuck there and try to stop out 216 i'm like oops i made a really bad mistake and at this point i'm like ah shoot now i'm stuck thirty two thousand dollars i'm down what over uh, uh 164,000 realized i'm gonna be down three six hundred and eighty three thousand realize and on the hook for a lot more unrealized so that was a very critical mistake guys uh just preemptively jumping the gun there just to go just to uh, show you guys that i'm not perfect but you'll see that i still managed to get out of it it goes to show you the power of recycling shares recycling shares does what for you recycling shares allows you to get out of these jams this is why i'm seemingly never end up with a red day i've only had a handful of red days on the year most of my days have been green days how because of recycling shares because i make a mistake like this it's a very bad mistake i'm in thirty-two thousand shares that's a lot of a lot of shares do the math yourself that's a huge position to be in with a 253 average on a stock that's halting to the downside at 216 probably gonna open below 200 i'm probably gonna be not looking good here okay but still i'm gonna get out of this just watch just watch okay just watch trust me on this one now stocks halted now at 216. How did I get out of this? Now it's open at 170. I'm like, oh my God. Now I got to stop out. I'm taking up huge loss. Now I'm down over a million dollars. Not looking too hot. Not looking too hot. Down 1.7 million dollars. Now I'm getting like freaking deja vu flashbacks, PTSD of the last time GME crash, right? You guys remember the last GME crash where I recovered from that $2 million loss? End up with a million dollar win. Oh no, now it's going to be a repeat of that, okay? So look what happens. Now it's helped into the upside. I might have dumped, the, now now, now I might have been in a double whammy situation, okay? So my, I might have dumped half of my shares at the low and I didn't get filled on what might have been the bottom, okay? So too, too, uh, too slow to hit the, hit the offer to get in on the, on, the, on the real bottom possibly here, possibly. Not sure yet. Stock's bottomed out 172 for now. Uh, I got 16,000 shares, still at that terrible $253 average. I'm down to realize $1.7 million. I'm still on the hook unrealized. Uh, this number is not correct, but still on the hook unrealized. All right, so I'm, down, I'm on the hook for a lot, a lot right here, guys. It's looking exactly like the same situation last time, just because of that critical error of adding too much size there preemptively around that 230, 240 area and stopping out at half the shares possibly at the dead bottom so again what possibly could go wrong even more so right i'm just absolutely just botching this trade how in the world is mad ass going to come back from this how in the world is he going to make all that money back and on top of that end up green on a day let's watch okay so 16 000 shares 253 average we'll watch the halt resume right here again it's about to resume let's see what happens okay here we go here we go here we go here we go. Here we go. So now, now we resume. We're still below $200, okay? There's a lot of support right here. You see there's a lot of support right here between 160 170. Stocks rate free falls from 348 down to 172. I'm looking for stalls here on the level 2, you see? It's not going down. It's not going down. The bids going up. So there you go. Boom. Adding full size right there. Adding full size right there. 
You see how there was a stall there. The stock was not dropping below 190 there. I went for it. 60,000 share now, 212 average, nailing that bottom out, nailing that freaking bottom. Is he really going to do it again? Is this guy, is this mad, mad, mad ass going to do it again? Is he going to crawl out of yet another huge hole and end up huge on the day? I think you guys know the spoiler. Here we go, 220. Now I'm up huge. You see that? Boom, guys. Nailed it. Nailed the bottom. Unbelievable call there. So again, what happened there? Stock bottomed out of 172. It halt resumed a second time. Look what happened. It did not drop below 190. You saw that bid support there around 190. The stock tried to push below. It didn't go there. And it basically pushed up to an upside halt at 203 or whatever it was. And this time, I made no mistake. Did not miss the fill. Nailing it. Now I'm up huge on the trade. Up seven figures on this trade. Am I going to make it back? Am I really going to make it back, guys? 240s. 240s. Selling some there in the 240s. Now realizing some gains. There we go. Now only down 700,000. 250s are coming up. 250s. There we go. Oh my God, guys. I mean, is this guy, is this guy, is this guy, is this guy for real? 300,000 realized. Look at that. Now I'm green on the day. Now I only got 8,000 shares left, guys. Look at that. Look at that. In a matter of what? Five minutes. I went from being down. 1.7 million dollars on top of whatever was unrealized so it's probably down to over two million dollars again just like the first time around just like the first gme dump trade and now all of a sudden i'm green now 192,000 and another unrealized four hundred thousand dollars unbelievable guys unbelievable that is ridiculous absolutely ridiculous just for that guys please smack the like button you guys are not going to see this type of trade anywhere else, guys. Nobody's going to show this type of trade on YouTube. Smack the like button, please, for me, guys. If you guys have not subscribed to me, I don't know why you guys are not subscribing to this. It's some epic shit. There we go. So I'm all out, and I'm going short, okay? So what happens here is my target right here was 250, 250 to 260. I did call that out in chat for you, uh, for the guys in my community. So we sold it into that 250 to 60 push, and concurrently, I'm looking at this resistance here around 260 all the way up to 280 for a short. So I went ahead and sold the long, made $2.4 million on that long, my biggest single trade of all time. You guys just witnessed it on this video. First ever multi-million dollar trade. And I'm going to concurrently go short. There we go. Instantly up on the trade. Crazy, guys. So flipping biases again. Going to short this bounce. Usually, again, I always talk about this in my chat room. Uh, a, lot of these a lot of these stocks, they do the big dump. And you get the big bounce. And you get one nice short and then one secondary bounce out of it. I'm going to show you guys all that good stuff in this video. All right? All that good stuff. So right here, adding to the short there, 260. At this point, this is where the quotes start spazzing out. I'm going to show you guys in a second. Uh, not, yet, not here yet, but you'll see. All right. I want to just point it out when it happens. So I'm short 16,000 shares at 261. There we go. I think uh, right there. You see that? You see how the bid is 258 and the offer is 257.95, right? And then you got the prints here at 256. And then you got Toss right here saying that the price is at 258.96. I'm like, what the heck is going on? Like, I'm short 16,000 shares of this stock at 261. And I don't know what the freaking price of the stock is. Talk about, talk about a horror show, right? Talk about a horror show. So at this point, this is, cross, this is called cross-coding, guys. This is what I'm talking about. So when this is going on in your level two, you're like, shoot, great. Great. As if, as if, as if trading wasn't difficult already. Now, now my quotes are spazzing out, right? So look at this: two fifty six on the bid, and two fifty four, two fifty seven on the time of sale, and two fifty three here. Like, what's the freaking price? So now I'm going, now I'm going blind, which sucks because, uh, you know, I got in when the the quotes were okay, and then now the quotes are messed up. Look at this thing. You see this? It's constantly cross quoting this entire time. 256 what is it 252 by 245 it's 242 on toss so later I, I realized that from the guys in chat they told me that the uh, you know might as well stick to the toss quotes even though toss is known for being really laggy uh that it was actually at least at least more accurate than this all right because looking at this is like which way is right which way is left right um this one at least even though it's like maybe a, a second or two behind at least it's it's displaying the right number closer to the right number Right, so at this point, I'm like, "What the hell is the price? 252 by 239? What is this? 252 on the time and sales? So none of this is correct. You see this? None of this is correct. The real price is actually more or less right here, right here. Okay. 
So at this point, I'm like, shoot, like, what's the freaking price? Uh, the guys in my chat are saying that it's in the 230. So I, I end up trying to cover it at 240. But you see right here, no fill, right? No fill. So I started getting out some. It doesn't make any sense, right? Like, how am I getting filled here when the bid is supposedly 241 right here? So the price is clearly below 240. That's why I'm getting filled, the real price. And I'm all out of it. So I, I had to take it all out there because I had no idea what the price was. So I ended up getting a nice win out of the trade regardless. So I'm up almost a million dollars on a day. But that was terrible, guys. That's a terrible, terrible situation. I really hope they fix that. Uh, I did uh, talk to Das, and, and, and uh, hopefully we resolve that. Uh, they did try to work on the problem. You see the quotes are still messed up. Try to go long there because it looks like it's bottoming out where I covered. So long a little bit there. Only 3,000 shares filled. At this point, I pretty much lost my confidence to go inside because of the messed up quotes. So, like, I can't, I can't with conviction go in size on these trades now, which is unfortunate. It really did cost me a big win here because if, you know, if I had the conviction in, uh, uh, in having the right freaking quotes and knowing what the real freaking price of the stock was, I'd probably be going in more with more than, you know, 3,000 shares on these uh, secondary trades. But it is what it is. It is what it is. But yeah, I'm going to show you guys uh, the next trade here. Basically a long uh, setup here. We're looking for a long here. Uh, 240, if not right here, around 220, 220 and 205. So it stalls out there. So I added some shares at 220. You saw the stall there on the fake halt. Stall there on the fake halt there. It's bouncing back the other way. So now I have 7,450 uh, 7, shares, but you see now I'm going in a lot smaller, right? If I had more confidence in having the right quotes and making sure that things weren't going to malfunction on me, then I probably would have added maybe like, you know, 10,000 shares at least, minimum. But it is what it is. Selling into this pop there. Sold half there into the pop now i'm officially over a million dollars in a day guys a million dollars it's officially my best day of all time my previous best day was 1.01 million the previous gme dump day selling some more than until this push 1900 shares left at this point 1.04 million dollars up on a day realizing 1.2 million dollars on the long side still down 200,000 on the short side but still all good here looking for a final push here over 250 right here there we go, and all out of it. So now I'm up $1.08 million, guys, after being down. You saw it right here live on this Mad As Money YouTube video. I was down $1.7 million, plus the unrealized. So probably down over $2 million. Again, now I'm up $1 million. I'm banking $1.24 million net on the long. Again, these trades are the same thing, guys. Watch the last GME dump video, and now watch this one. They played out the exact same way. The prices were different. The magnitude of the drop was different, but it's the same thing every time. Big drop, big bounce, a little bit of a dip again that you can probably short, and then another secondary bounce. Same thing every single time. And then now from here on out, I'm going to look for scalps to pad the wallet. Smaller size, size down. Look at the volumes decreasing, right? Decreasing volume, decreasing range. The opportunities are still there, but you still got to size down appropriately uh, to the quality of the setup. Okay, guys? The quality of the setup. So... You know, we got a couple more minutes left in this video. I'm going to show you guys some, uh, some of the trades that are left. Again, hopefully you guys are enjoying this big money trades, guys. Again, you guys will not see this anywhere else on YouTube because nobody else is doing crazy stuff like this. That's why you guys got to subscribe to Mad As Money. All right, you guys got to subscribe to the Mad As Money YouTube channel. It doesn't cost you a dime. It doesn't cost you a dime. If you guys want to watch that Piker stuff, that 100 share Piker stuff, be my guest. Go to those other YouTube channels. You know, you can watch them make uh, $100 a day. That's cool. $500 a day. But you guys want to see millions and millions of dollars made. Real big leagues, big boys trading. This is the place to be, guys. This is the place to be. So going short here off this 270 right now, I'm looking for basically a short against this level and against this VWAP area. So again, you know, just flipping biases, you know, shorting the balances, long, uh, longing the dips. Buy low, sell high, short high, cover low. Nothing, nothing special, guys. Again, nothing complicated about how I trade, now how I operate. Just very simple, basic stuff. Shorting, you see now I'm shorting smaller size because the volume is getting kind of low. I don't want to be stuck with uh, liquidity issues and not be able to get out. The 2,500 shares, 272 short there. You'll see me try to add on this VWAP pop and not get a full fill. This is, I think, the last trade in the video. But uh, at this point, just looking to pad the wallet, man. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting really pretty. Sitting really pretty. I already nailed the biggest trade in my career. I'm already, already on the biggest day of my career. Just looking to add to it. 
add to this historic record day, record breaking day. So still short here. Two seventy two. 283, 284, watch for the reject of VWAP. If not, it can go to 300, so I am keeping that in mind. So trying to short some more, 282, no fill. Did fill some at 280, lowered my offer to 280. Now I only got 3,300 shares. Looking for a quick scalp here. There it goes. So covering there, I'm officially all out of the position. I think that's the last trade on the tape. So there we go, guys. $1.1 million. I think I finished the day up $1.14 million or something like that. Go check my Twitter. Go check the website. It's all posted right there for you guys, the final P&L on the day. So good cover there. Now it's back to 277 279 So at this point, guys, uh, it was just smaller trades from here on out. There were some dips there and later in the day, some pops and stuff like that that I scalped to add another forty thousand dollars or so but that's pretty much today guys the epic career best day you guys saw it here live on the mad as my youtube channel hopefully you guys learned a thing or two now you got not just one but two examples of these epic dump plays on the same stock but they play out the same way every single time guys i did the same exact trade on uh, BPTH, Elfin, SPI. Just look up all those videos, classic mad ass videos, halt resume washout long videos. They're just getting crazier and crazier and crazier with the numbers getting more and more and more as I scale up with my position size. So it's crazy to see, man. It's crazy to see now the numbers are, we're talking seven figures now. Who knows what we're going to be talking about in, in the future mad ass money videos, man. Sky's the limit. Sky's the limit. Maybe we're going to be talking about eight figures one day we'll see mark my words mark my words but hopefully you guys learned a thing or two again please like this video if you guys enjoy big money live big money trades on some crazy action like gamestop one for the ages smack the like button subscribe to the youtube channel uh, follow me on twitter daily pnls daily trade ideas follow me on instagram to follow my house hunting journey again i'm still looking to buy that house i know a couple of you guys keep commenting why Am I taking a loan to buy a house? Am I making that, that many millions of dollars? Am I really just paper trading? Is that what it is? That's why I need to take a loan? No, guys. The interest rates are like 3%. You'd be a fool to not take a loan. Cash is king. Stay liquid, right? I, if I, I can keep the three, four, five million million in my account, you know how much buying power that is, guys? Multiply that by four, man. $5 million gives me $20 million in buying power. You know how many shares of GME can I buy with four? 20 million dollars or how many shares of tesla i can buy with 20 million dollars so no i am going to take a loan at a three percent interest rate i can easily make that money back by just literally just putting it all on spy if i wanted to which the average stock market return is 10 percent a year boom there you go easy easy lesson there in financial literacy guys so those of you guys that are saying why am i taking a loan guys just just <laughs> look up the interest rates that's all i'll tell you all right so that being said this is your boy, Matt Az. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, all that jazz. Until next time for the next epic, epic videos. Cheers.